एच डी देवगोड़ा सर आउटसेट आई वुड लाइक टू एक्सप्रेस मे सिंसियर ग्रैटिट्यूड for the chair for having allowed me to speak on this renewable energy sir i have got better experience in my political career as chief minister of karnataka the amount of problem faced by the farmers by the consumers i do not want to allow such a thing to happen because the then government whichever party i do not want to mention a former prime minister a chief minister has written a book karnataka in darkness my colleague is sitting here in such a circumstance i would like to just draw the attention of the honorable members on both sides i am not going to make any comment on anybody who is not now the members of the house either to this house or the other house the book written by the former chief minister karnataka in darkness today in agricultural minister when he was <coughs> on your direction concluding his speech sir being a farmer i felt very bad sir i have not come here to praise anybody yes on the day when i spoke on agriculture i spoke few words on the agriculture minister having known as a member of the standing committee on agriculture i review when we reviewed what madhya pradesh has done i don't want to go into all those details sir not to allow a single farmer to suffer who have got the, what we call ganga kalyan which is introduced by me as the minister to provide the irrigation facilities where there is no flow irrigation where there is no dam where there is no tank to have the bore well and draw the water ground water to give to schedule cars schedule drives sir and all those people the power everything has been met by the government whenever the chief minister i know the difficulty what the problem of the power sector sir i went to the extent of meeting bala saab takre to get power to karnataka not to allow the farmers and he issued instruction the late manohar joshi who was the chief minister then 500 megawatts whichever party he may belong i don't want to allow my farmers to suffer i went there when the prime minister the matter was discussed on on this very same my colleague is sitting here i am not going to object i am not going to object anybody how i suffered i am telling that's all 
Sir, I can debate on this issue. Why I hold the poor portfolio as Prime Minister? Why? Because I know the problem of the power sector. Only one word I would like to say, because I can speak volumes on this issue, on this subject. Irrigation power is my one of the pet subject as a farmer, sir. When Modi ji Modi ji came in last ten years, what is the development? How much progress he has made? I can quote facts and figures. But one thing is, there is no corruption charge in last ten, ten years. I can boldly say this. I can boldly say this because I have got the bitter experience in the past. I can quote several instances. But I don't want to hurt the feelings. Any party, any leader, whichever party they may belong, but in last <coughs> ten years, there is no corruption in the power sector or any other sector. With these words, sir, I would like to give you some facts and figures. Over the years, importance of renewable energy in India has only grown upwards in a country of 1.4 billion people. We cannot secure our future if we do not adopt a model of sustainable development. And sir, for sustainable development, green and clean energy is a very important factor. The earlier hydro power. Then we came to solar. We came to wind energy. Now, the most important factor is the renewable energy. Sir, now, in our country, 1.4 billion people who cannot secure our future if you do not adopt a model of sustainable development. And sir, for sustainable development, green and clean energy is a very important factor. That is why in this regard, we have to make, we have so many international commitments also. Sir, with your kind permission, sir, I hear, I must admit, that so much of work has been done in last 10 years under Sri Narendra Modi's Honorable Prime Minister for promotion of renewable energy in this country. Let me place some data on record. India has installed a non-fossil fuel capacity has increased 396% in the last nine years and stands at more than 203.19 thousand megawatts or giga megawatt today in solar energy alone. Installed capacity has increased by 30, 30 times in the last nine years and stands at 85.4 LGW as of June 24. So there is no doubt that a lot of work has been done in this front. However, sir, the renewable energy, there are still many areas of concern and we need to address some core challenges according to Terry report, India is currently is the third largest 
energy consuming country in the world but 80% of our energy demands still being met by fossil fuels it means renewable energy share is only 20% i have learned that the government of india has sent an ambitious target of achieving 50% of its installed capacity for renewable energy by 2030 i find no special package for this sector in the current year's budget the terry energy report has estimated that by 2050 the vikasit bharat the energy demand will be 400 percent <coughs> more than the present demand therefore the ministry will have to speed up its efforts in this regard this will also require huge capital investment in the sector i hope the minister will throw some light on this aspect in his reply secondly for speedy growth in the renewable energy sector you will also have to address regional disparities the states which are lagging behind need proper hand holding addressing regional disparity is also important because it causes strain on those states who have not done good work sir now if we talk about karnataka it is touted to be the leader in the renewable energy but as of today we have tapped only 11% of our potential harnessing renewable energy moreover in this recent years our growth in this sector has slowed down while the national average is 14% of growth of the renewable energy in karnataka it is only 2.5 5 8% 14% growth renewable energy energy average but karnataka is 2.8% my friends should no take note of that if you are serious about harnessing the true potential of the state in renewable energy i would like to suggest some measures uh, the consideration finally firstly you will have to lo- local supply chain and logistic support for util- utilizing offshore wind full potential of energy generation secondly will have to provide proper storage facilities of the energy that is generated from the renewable energy sources at present we do not have sufficient storage sir storage facilities thirdly a major challenge with regard to the solar power cells and battery storage is disposable the shelf life of solar panel is just 25 years and at present the country does not have any disposal policy for solar panels so this is going to cause huge problem of in future moreover we also need to see that hurry transact transition to renewable energy should not impact our biodiversity because about 80% of renewable energy plants are installed on agricultural and eco sensitive lands <coughs> so i suggest that the policy should be corporate incorporate the only degraded land degraded land will be utilized for this purpose 
So before I concluding, I would like to say that the renewable energy is not only important for the point of view of sustainable development, but it is also huge potential job creation at the rural level. Therefore, the government must make holistic policy intervention in this regard. With warm regards, thank you very much for having come and allowed me to speak on this very important subject which is in my heart. Once again, before I conclude, thank you very much, sir, and also to the leader having come when I was speaking to the leader of the house. Thank you very much, sir. With warm regards, I will conclude.